It's time for the The Douglas Douglas Coleman Coleman Show. Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators, the famous and not so famous, the controversial and the light and fluffy, we have it all. Now, here's Douglas Coleman. Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, Omar Mora. Hi, Omar. How are you? How are you doing? Good, good, good. Thank you for coming on this show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I was reading through your bio, and I found it kind of interesting. It said that you started out studying to be a doctor uh, in Puerto Rico, and then you moved to New York City to do your residency. And after 9-11, you decided to pursue acting. I found that kind of interesting because I think after 9-11, I would have wanted to be a doctor. (laughs) <laughs> did you went to med school no but i mean just the idea of all the people and you know to try to help them because there were a lot of people that were injured a lot of people died and i mean just I, it would have inspired me to want to do something in that field rather than being an actor yeah. but okay so how did that change your mind to be an actor i mean it's, it's one of those experiences one of those uh, life change experiences that that you kind of um, dig into yourself, if you want to say it like that, and try to find what you really want to do in life and, you know, pursue your dreams. You know, when you're a kid, sometimes you said you want to be an astronaut, you want to be, I don't know, a doctor, engineer, an actor, whatever it is, and sometimes you have that pure thought and desire of doing it, and for some reason life just, you know, changes and you change with it. So I did went to med school and I did, I'm still, I'm actually graduate. I'm a doctor right now. I'm a medical doctor and I still have my office. But it was the moment that while I was doing uh, my my, my residency in New York City, it was my last year of of, of, uh, med school, I believe. It just, it just changes. It just said, you know what? Life is short. I did work with those, with a lot of people that was burned in my hospital, St. Vincent Hospital that it was in downtown New York. I saw, you know, life when the, uh, building have the fire and the the, the, the smoke. You, I can I was able to see them from the 12th floor. So it, it it definitely was an experience that changed me and and that I don't know pushed me to to really follow my, my dreams and my 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 life journey adventure if you want to call it like that. And um, and I just decided I make a plan and decided to pursue uh, acting and writing. So um, yeah, I just I just I just went for it. Okay. So you actually, you completed it. So you are a doctor, yeah? Yeah, I'm a medical doctor. A I, medical have my doctor. Own, uh, I have my office here in Los Angeles. Okay, so you have your own practice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrific. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. So if you, if you end up finishing med school, you know, you can work here in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at your pictures that your PR people sent. Uh, I, I'm guessing these are fairly older are are you that good looking for being 40 some odd years old <laughs> i i i always have that uh young look so those pictures was um, a photo shoot i had last year last year um, if oh. you go to, uh, last year if you go to my instagram you can see my picture from um uh, i just went to i just was in san diego comic-con now last week and you can see some of the pictures and yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate that I have, I guess, good genes and, um, you know, I, I, I'm aging decently, I guess. <laughs> well, it looks like you're not aging at all because I, when I looked at the pictures, it w- I looked at the pictures before I read your bio, and I thought, oh, he looks like he's maybe 21, 22. But if <laughs> you have to be in your 40s because of the 9 11, oh. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, I mean, I don't like to say my age because in, in the industry they kind of. Cause I still go to auditions late twenties, early thirties, but I, I, I go forties plus, plus, plus. Yeah. Well, <laughs> listen, you're a very handsome guy. You look great. So. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, anyways, so you also have a production company called Morris Productions. Is that correct? Yeah, that's my independent production company that, um, you know, I love to write and tell stories. So 
through my production company, I'm you know working hard to make my stories happen. Uh, mostly, I want to do uh, films and TV series, and I write comic books as well. So, okay, so your production company is uh, only for your uh, your products, or do you produce other people's at, work? At, at this stage, I'm producing my own work because I have so much work I need to get out there. So I don't have uh, time to you know uh, to work. With other projects, if something come along, I'm always open for it. But uh, right now, I'm so busy that this lady that I have, it you know, it, it comes from my own, you know, uh, the the work, the, the um, projects that I wrote. And what are we gonna? What are we promoting here? Are we promoting ancient explorers, or do you have a film, or what are what are we gonna talk about today? Yeah, we we I mean, the la the latest uh, book. Um, uh, it's a hybrid novel comic book. It's called Ancient Explorers. That's the one that was uh, released on San Diego Comic Con. Um, that's the one we're doing most, but I'm also promoting The Unertians. It's the comic book I wrote in 2019. And, you know, I, it came out the full trade, chapter 1 to 12 now, uh, on a San Diego Comic Con as well. But I put both online on uh, Kindle, Amazon, because the printing is so expensive that we decided to go um, online. Digital. Oh, for the uh, for the graphic novel, you mean? For the, for the graphic novel and ancient explorers as well for both. Oh, okay. Now, are those just a graphic novel, or there's there's also going to be a film or TV series associated with that? Yeah, the Unertians we're actively developing as a TV series. Um, I just got an IP intellectual property representation that is pitching out. Some of the streamers are as interested, so we're working. To see if you know it makes it happen to make it happen, a lot of pieces needs to be moved in order to you know to make uh, something like that happen. Especially because the Unertians, it has a lot of uh, f visual effects, uh, C CGI, so it would take um, it would be a, a decent budget. So we're working with that, but it's, we're actively developing as a TV series. And then Action Explorers is the new one, so I'm. I'm just I'm just getting the story out there first, but eventually I want to make it as a TV series as well or, or, or film, live action. Uh, I wanted to ask you about it's your first feature film was called Thirty Days with My Brother. Uh, tell us a little about yeah. that. Was that a story about you with your brother? So Thirty Days with My Brother. It's a fici fictional um, a work, and nothing to do with my personal life okay. at all. But it's a story that I always had in mind, um, you know, with with uh, what happened when you have a long lost brother and you find him as an adult, that relationship, even if they're, you know, blood brothers, but they're totally different uh, people. So um, it's a story that I wrote that it was my first independent film as a producer, writer, and actor. And uh, we got lucky that AMC Independent back in 2016 loved the story and they put them on theater for one week uh, in seven, I believe it was seven or eight cities in the nation. So it was a definitely an interesting experience and an experience that I learned a lot. You had mentioned earlier about CGI and I, can I ask you something about that? Because I've had this conversation with other people that have been on the show and it's something that I don't quite understand. And maybe you can explain yeah. it just a little bit. Why is CGI so much more expensive and why does it take so many people to do? When I see the credits now on films that are heavily CGI'd, there's like hundreds of people <laughs> that are on yeah, there for the thing. I would think it would be cheaper because the alternative is to be building real sets, right? Yeah, it's crazy how expensive it is because, um, I mean, I'm not a VFX um expert but i do have people that work on the vfx um departments and you know sometimes just one frame it needs few few people to work on them uh is, is the, com the, the the compose is the the atmosphere is the um i, I don't remember the, the the term is how you said it but it just takes time just for a small piece just for a, a face or a hand or a movement um, the rendering is, takes forever. It's just the whole thing is is very complicated. So it does takes those big studios. They, if you see, they have different VFX companies because sometimes one VFX company is not enough. 
And those VFX company have, I don't know how many people, I mean, can, when you see the credits, like sometimes, I don't know, hundreds of people working with them. And sometimes they outsource to different companies. I have a friend in Argentina, he has a VFX company, and a lot of Hollywood movies call them to do certain things for certain movies, and it takes them months. And they're in Argentina working, and they work on this movies here that for just few scenes, and other scenes have been worked by other VFX companies. It's, um, it's just very complicated and complex, and it's very uh, time-consuming. Well, it must be, because the budgets for some of those films are have gone through the roof. And oh, it yeah. always just amazed me where, if you look at films historically from, you know, maybe the 1940s and 1950s, they had entire, you know, crews of carpenters oh. building sets out of two-by-fours and paper mache and you know you would have thought that would have been more expensive than to computerize it but apparently not it's not um i mean nowadays you need to build those sets and then put green screen to build the set over those sets exactly <laughs> so it yeah. looks like sometimes you develop a little set and then you put green screen to develop a whole city or something and everything has its own expertise it's um it's very interesting and i'm looking forward to work with my films. I love science fiction and um, fantasy movies. So I'm actually looking forward to start working on my films to see how really the magic happens because I think until you don't do it, it's, it's hard to comprehend. Yeah, I think you're right. For Ancient Explorers, is this going to be a feature film or is it going to be a TV series that you're looking to do? Well, Ancient Explorers right now, it's just a graphic novel. Um, it's a hybrid novel and comic book. And um, I mean, the goal is to do it as a as a TV series or film. I have I already wrote the few few drafts on for the film script. And uh, let me see how it goes with the novel to see if I start um, writing the TV series episodes. So I have both in hand. You know, when it comes to when I start pitching them, so I do like to have everything ready so now they with other streamers uh you don't know what they're going to ask if the film or the or the tv series like for example the inertians i'm pitching as a, as a tv series i already wrote the first three episodes i have the treatment for season two and season three but at the same time i do have ready the film script just in case but we're pushing now for the tv series because i believe the story is more for a tv series so Ancient Explorers, let's see how it goes, and then we decide how we're going to push it. Okay. Well, you must be a very busy man to have a uh, medical practice and to be doing all of this at the same time. Yeah? Do you ever sleep? It gets, <laughs> <laughs> it gets hectic. It gets hectic for sure. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. But, you know, I, lo I love the entertainment business. I love uh, storytelling, so... That drives me to, to keep going because it's something that I'm passionate about. And, and I don't feel like, although I put so many hours and sometimes I get tired, like coming from Comic-Con, we, we were an exhibitor for the first time in Motors Production. So it was like 12, 13 hours on the floor working. Gets tired, but I don't know, when you're passionate about something, sometimes you just don't feel it. Well, it doesn't feel like work, yeah, when you're passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, it's true. Medicine does feel like work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Omar, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to wind this up at this point. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, do you have a website you want to give out? Yeah, they can uh, go to my website at morasproductions.com. And I have an Instagram that I use the most for uh, putting uh, work stuff, and it's at Mora himself uh, on Instagram. At Mora himself? At Mora himself, yeah. And Twitter, I have at Omar Mora Acton. Okay. All right, great. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, it was nice meeting you, and uh, best of luck with everything you're doing. Thank you, Dora. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, you know, and to put our stories out there, because people like you help us to, for independent, you know, storytellers to get out there to the public. Oh, well, it was my pleasure. All right, take care. <laughs>